What is up guys? Thank you for watching another video today. I actually came over to Carlos and Lacey's house today to basically give you guys a full buyer's guide on a Mitsubishi Eclipse or Eagle Talon. Um, this is meant for someone that basically wants to get a Mitsubishi Eclipse or Eagle Talon, um, has no prior research, doesn't really know much about them, is really interested in getting one. Carlos, and we got Lazy. Where's he at? Is he down there right now? What up? Hey. <laughs> all right, so the first thing we're gonna be going over is all the trim levels that these cars come in. There's four different types, including the Eclipse RS, Eclipse GS, Eclipse GST, and as some would call this the Eclipse GSX, which is the all-wheel drive version. All right, to start off, this is an RS car, but honestly, it was actually converted completely to basically what a GS is. Uh, the way you can really tell is uh, the rear actually does not have any brakes. This one does because it was converted, but these actually come with rear drums. They have no sway bar, they come with no side skirts, and all the door handles are black no matter the color. And another... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now both these cars here are actually GS models. Uh, the way you can tell is, of course, you actually have painted side mirrors, you have the painted door handles, you finally have side skirts, and you actually have uh, automatic windows and locks. And all models besides the RS actually come with a sunroof as well. And I like the RS, you actually have uh, rear discs and brakes. Uh, these are actually upgraded Brembo from an Evo, but with a 428, you will actually get uh, brakes like these. You will also get a rear sway bar on the GS model, and you're also going to be getting some nice little fog lights. Now, GST is where it starts getting interesting. This is basically everything that a GS model basically has. The only difference is that it actually comes with a Mitsubishi 4G63. And unfortunately, as you guys can see, there's nothing in here, but there used to be a 4G63 in here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and place a picture. Right after the GST comes, uh, what many people call the GSX. Like I've told you guys, it was actually a GS that was actually converted um, with an Evo drivetrain, so it's actually all wheel drive, but it does have a Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX rear end. Um, the way you can tell if it's a GSX, is everything previously mentioned the only difference is that it's actually going to have a rear differential right there a dry shaft completely different rear subframe and other small components and details that aren't in the other models now you must be asking yourself what trim of eclipse do you actually want well obviously the gsx all-wheel drive turbo model is the best but i actually don't recommend it for a lot of them. a lot of people actually just want to jump straight into a gst or gsx but the only issue with that is that these turbo model eclipses are actually really high maintenance they're super temperamental um, and if you don't do any like type of maintenance or any type of work on them uh, consistently, um, they basically throw fits. Um, they don't like to run a lot unless you are very meticulous with your maintenance. Uh, in my personal opinion, if you're not very mechanically inclined, I actually highly, highly recommend you to start off with a 428 non-turbo model, which is what this car initially was. I'm actually gonna come show you guys CJ's 428, which they're working on right now. These cars are actually very, very reliable in stock form. Um, of course, once you start adding stuff like boost, and you start running into issues such as lazies um, even then he still maintains his so it's always running uh, for example this car uh, CJ today did uh, the valve cover gasket the axle seals he put a new axle on there because the other one was old um, he flushed the transmission he bled the brakes he did some oil uh, just some basic stuff that's basically gonna keep the car running um, I don't know why people tend to think these cars will run just as good as a 2020 Toyota Corolla or something. These are at least 20 years old. Right now it's a 2020. Um, and not even speaking about the first generation, I'm just speaking about the second generation. Um, and you just have to understand that any old car is gonna come with its issues. Um, and no car right now like this is in perfect condition. Now, once you're actually a lot more experienced with the 428 platform, you could one, either sell it and buy a turbo GSC or GSX boost it which is what lazy did eventually you'll gain around you know like 50 or so horsepower you'll basically be around like the 200 range it's still a super fun car or if you want to you know go the extra mile you could always evo swap it like we did with this one you could either go with a front wheel drive or all wheel drive setup depending on what you want all right next point we're going to be talking about pricing um these cars unfortunately are very cheap to acquire which is is a reason why you see a lot of these always for sale you have you know kids that don't know what they're doing with these cars slap on modifications without taking care of things such as the timing belt just the regular oils um, clutches axles just basic stuff um, and once they break down they blame the car 
instead of themselves. They sell it off to the next owner, and it's very sad to see because they just end up getting junked, as you guys can see with this one. This is ready. This one. This one's pretty much ready to go to the junkyard. As you guys can see, there's a bunch of spare parts in there. Um, it was just used for parts, uh, including the engine, transmission, stuff like that. And it's pretty much the end of its life. Um, if you do want to keep it alive, you just have to be willing to put in a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of money into the car because it is a very old car and it's basically a huge project. Um, it's not for the you know lighthearted. You, it does build a lot of character because it basically puts you through you know a lot of stuff as far as like you know just headaches and stuff. So. I mean, if you're willing to go through that struggle with the car, it is extremely worth it in the end. I've had this car for eight years and I do not regret a single decision I made with this car. Anyways, talking about price, um, let's start with the RS. The RS model, which is basically the base model, you could actually find at most for like $1,000 or less. So depending on condition, yeah, depend, depending on condition, if it's running, not running, has all the dandruff. <laughs> dandruff. <laughs> but yeah, expect to pay around $1,000 for a good running RS. Now, a GS, um, I've seen them range anywhere from a thousand to even like 2,500. I actually paid $2,800 for my car way back in 2012 and this was actually a GS, GS model which to some I might have overpaid but the car was very clean. It was one owner um, and I'm super happy with the purchase. And now we're going to get into the turbo GST model. Obviously this one's not running. This one's pretty much worth 50 to 100 dollars depending on the buyer but a good running gst will actually run like what like around like three thousand dollars or so yeah three thousand three thousand now once we get into the all-wheel drive model the gsx is they range anywhere from around three thousand to like what dude i actually saw one last year sold for like 22 remember the guy in florida it was a super clean low mile one um these are getting super rare um when you see a gsx expect to pay anything from three to seven k or so depending on condition yeah, no less than three yeah um of course unless you have a super clean one that's like unmolested everything you could fetch um, anywhere from like the 10 to 20 k's. I mean hopefully in the future they go up in value because I consider this a very beautiful car and a yeah. very nice platform to they have. They still hold their value. They still hold their value, yeah. Alright, so let's say you're out there looking at a car. Um, let's take CJ's for example. CJ's car's for sale. Oh, um, hey, whoa. What? <laughs> We're gonna give them a basic overview. What are they supposed to look for when they're looking at a 420A or 4G63 in person? Bottom of the oil cap. First thing you're gonna do, take off the oil cap from the engine make sure it's all oil and there's no like milky chocolate, chocolate milk substance um that usually means like a blown head gasket foamy yeah, foamy yeah you just have to be real careful that's usually a telltale sign check the oil see how much oil is in there right which then leads to checking your engine oil in the four and in, in the 428 models you'll have your little engine oil dipstick right here just make sure the oil level is good as you guys can see on this one it sits perfectly fine eclipses you want to look at the stress hard right so we're in Southern California, so we face no rust issues, right? But I know in other states, such in the you know the eastern states, they do get a lot of strut tower rust. It's very, very common to see in eclipses. Rust, sorry. Um, and also for DSMs, they tend to rust a lot in the rocker panels back over here. Um, it's super easy to tell. So when you're out there looking for one, just make sure you check these points and make sure that they're not rusting. Now we're gonna talk about vents. Uh, pretty much, you just want to go ahead and make sure that all fenders. Bumpers, stuff like that are all from one car. Of course, it is very common. It's kind of like 240SXs. Um, you basically have fenders and hoods and parts from other cars. It's very common to see in the DSM community. And honestly, it's very rare to see. But if you're seeing a very meticulous one, I would obviously check the vents everywhere on the body pumps. I'm talking hatch, hood, bumper, fenders, doors, stuff like that, just to make sure that the car is actually in one piece. And if you have access to the timing wheel, I would actually go ahead and check it, make sure that there's no any type of cracks on it. Um, that's usually a telltale sign that it hasn't been changed. Anyways, when you buy a car, let's say you just got it, the first thing I would obviously do, do an oil change, do a coolant flush, uh, transmission, if it's all wheel drive, do the transfer case for differential, uh, make sure all your motor mounts are in shot, um, check for boost leaks, it's very common to have boost leaks on this car. Um, and of course, if you actually see any type of wiring messes in the engine bay or inside the car, stay away. These things are a wiring nightmare um, and they tend to cause a lot of issues. <laughs> What's wrong with yours? As you guys can see, Lazy's. Man, if I was to see this car, I wouldn't want to buy it. <laughs> Look at the wiring. Lazy's had this car forever, so he knows every little detail about it. But of course, if you're a new owner, you have no idea what he did previously. So what are you going to know about the car, you know? And when you're out there looking for a car, do not believe anything the previous owner is selling you. He's obviously trying to sell you. While you're out there, you also want to go ahead and check for oil leaks. As you guys can see, we have oil leaks everywhere. It's very common for the DSM to leak uh, from places such as the rear main seal, um, valve cover, 
Um, just little miscellaneous parts that are gonna leak. They're super old cars. Once you get into the car, you wanna go ahead and make sure that all your body panels are pretty much the same. It is very common to see um, DSMers basically swap out interiors with other cars. The most desirable one is the full black leather interior, which comes out in all 99 models. Um, you also want to be aware that a lot of people will actually change up the clusters. For example, this is a 99 only cluster, which is the white face gauge. Other DSMs will actually have a black one. Uh, but then again, you want to make sure that the mileage is actually correct with the car, which is why I highly recommend that if you're very serious about buying one, you actually check the car packs on the car just to make sure that there are no accidents, that the mileage is correct, and that there's nothing wrong with the car as far as it being stolen or stuff like that. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to basically go ahead and take it on a test drive. So first thing you're going to do is just go ahead and make sure the stuff like the radio with your AC and stuff like that are working. Um, after you do that, you're going to go ahead and start the car. Make sure that all your gears go in perfectly. Once you start driving, you're going to have to make sure that your gas gauge isn't overheating. And you're basically going to be feeling how the car drives as far as suspension, clutch, power, stuff like that. Once you go on a test drive and you drive the car, you want to make sure you come to the back of the car and you check that there's no any type of weird exhaust fume coming out, such as blue, white, uh, very dark black. Um, those are actually signs of a blown head gasket. Just make sure that the exhaust fumes coming out are actually normal. Hey, and when you're uh, test driving your car, uh -huh. uh, to check for the clutch, you got to go oh, yeah. in third gear. So third gear, wall at a dead stop, and then what? And then... Uh, you let go of the clutch like normal uh, uh, and then don't give it gas and then if the car dies out then the clutch is still good but if the car still keeps going and it doesn't die out then the clutch is slipping. Another big issue that actually comes from factory on Mitsubishi Eclipses and Talents is actually the lower control arm. Uh, usually after you go lower on coilovers or springs um, it tends to put a lot of stress on the lower control arms. A lot. Yeah he, it actually it happened to you right? It recently happened to me. Right. Your wheel Dude. will tuck in and mess up your mental. Yeah, fender. so basically your lower control arm ball joint will actually give out at any speed, by the way. It can happen at any time. Anytime. It's very dangerous. So if you're gonna get one, make sure you just replace them. It's just just for safety. Um, it happened to lazy. Luckily, it was just right here down the street. Um, and as you guys can see, it pretty much ruined his fender. Anyways, that was pretty much just a quick guide. Um, if you're out there looking at the car and you really want to get it, even though it does have issues, uh, just please be prepared to pretty much, you know, work on the car, be okay with it breaking, be okay with pretty much having a complete rebuild, obviously, obviously over time based on your time schedule and budget, um, but they are worth it in my opinion. They're just very temperamental, they're very special. And if you do end up actually getting it, I highly recommend you uh, to get on Instagram, be very active in the DSM community. A lot of, you know, it's a very small community, so pretty much everyone knows each other. Join all the Facebook groups, uh, post your questions, obviously do your research first. This is huge in the DSM. You always have the new people going in on the Facebook groups asking very generic questions that you could actually just Google. Um, it's, it's pretty annoying for the people that have actually had the cars for a long time because it is very common issues that are actually just already on the internet. These uh, places like DSM Tuners, DSM Talk, uh, I think 428 tech. I'm not I'm not too sure. I haven't checked in a while. Uh, but when I barely got my car, I was pretty much always on the forums reading up on them. Anyways, I'm pretty much gonna end the video there. I pretty much just mentioned everything that I could think of on the top of my head. If you have any additional things that you think are essential to the DSM community, make sure you comment down below for everyone else to read. Um, let's just make this into a nice little guide for everyone. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.